So as you guys can tell, God's been beating me up. I mean, and that's a good thing sometimes that he just constantly is wearing on you, telling you what you need to do and, and uh, just speaking um, at me, <laughs> working, yeah, just chiseling stuff away. And um, this concept hit me a, a couple weeks ago, and, and here it is. I'm going to throw it out there. Our, our whole purpose here at What's New Worship is love God, love people. Man, here's the problem. I don't know if we really know how to love God. That's a difficult, complicated uh, thought in itself. And, and um, I think it's important if you have a Bible, and this isn't up on the notes, but it's 1 Corinthians 13. If you can look at that real quick. I'm just going to read eight verses of that real quick. And then I want you to understand the importance of uh, what, what we're getting into here. This chapter is probably read at 99% of all Christian weddings. And, and it's because it says this. Look what it says. I, want, I just want you to get the importance. See if you can figure out the importance of this, that word. Okay, watch what it says. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a, clinging, a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all the faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and I deliver up my body to be burned but have not loved, I gain nothing. That's starting to sound pretty important, isn't it? I mean, that sounds like a concept that we really have to nail. I think that's why when you look around, you see all these just love shirts. This, this is kind of the, this is what we desire. And I'm not saying we're perfect, but this is the desire of what's new worship, is to learn how to love God and love people. That's our plan. And then it says this. Then it gives this explanation of love. Look what it says. It says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong uh, doing, but rejoices with the truth. Now, this is where, I, man, this is where you, you ought to feel like it's time to worship again. It says, love bears all things. Oh, my goodness, isn't that awesome? Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. And the beginning of verse 8 says, love never fails. So this whole concept in my head, I started thinking, we're not really good at loving God. Matter of fact, what we're really good is accepting the love of God. <laughs> Trust me, I put CJ through some tough stuff last night because I was digging through uh, worship songs. I got on YouTube and I was looking for songs. I was looking for songs that talked about loving God. And you want to know what most of the songs talk about? God's love for me. And I'm not saying that that's a problem. But if the scripture says that the greatest two commandments that we can have are these two, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the second one is equal to it, love your neighbor as yourself, then we need to figure this out. What does love God look like? This verse came across my, uh, while I was studying this week, 1 John 3, 18, it says, Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. Um, on the What's New page on Facebook, it says something like this. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's verbatim right now, but it, it says something like this. Uh, you are not what you say you are, but you, you are what you... Uh, how does it go? You're not what you say you do, but you are what you do. You are what you do. Yeah. I mean, we can go around... We can go around and we can be this group of uh, happy-go-lucky Christians going around saying, we love God, we love people, we love God. Come check out our church. We love God, we love people. But if the reality is not an action, if we're just saying something, we are not really loving people. 
So that's what we're trying to do in our community. Man, I'm very excited about this. This, this winter for uh, our Christmas thing, this is what we're doing for Christmas. There's a group called Watts, and I can't remember what exactly the, the uh, what's the initial stand for, Winchesters? All right, I hope you all got that because I didn't get it. But anyway, here's what it is. This is going to be awesome. We're, we're hosting it for 13 weeks, not us, but for 13 weeks, area churches and places host a, a place for the homeless to come stay at your church for the week so they're out of the cold. And we're hosting uh, the, the first, second week in December. We're hosting the second week in December from Monday night uh, till Monday morning. So Sunday, when you come back, you'll have to walk around the uh, cots that'll be sitting in our foyer because we are host. That's, we're, we're trying to love on people. We don't want it to just be words. But if we're not careful, we're really good not at loving God, but accepting the love of God. What if, what if, my wife, she's making her debut this morning as an actress, so pray for her. She's the one, she's the one that needed the bottle up here on the table. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what if we treated our wives or spouses or girlfriends, boyfriends the way that we treat God? I want you to watch this, just, just these little brief things, and we're going to talk about it. Pull up the first slide. I adore Hey, hon. Hey, I'm about to go out with the ladies. I just bought a new outfit. What do you think? Looks awesome, hon. You are great. That's perfect. Looks awesome. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You're gorgeous. Okay. That didn't work, does it? Church, I'm scared that's what our worship services have turned into. I got my phone on for a reason, so. <laughs> I adore. See, in a, in a relationship that we, I say, listen, when I got up uh, 13 years ago, I hope that's right, 13 years ago. <laughs> She's out now, wow. Well, when I got up 13 years ago and said that Christine was the love of my life and I committed my, my forever to her, um, it's because I'm in love with her. I love her. I adore her. I think she's beautiful. I think she's perfect. There's, when I see her, there's something inside of me that goes, man, that's my wife. And I'm excited about it. That would be vain, right? Not to even look at her, to just kind of stand there and say the words. I know I'm stomp stomping on some toes. That would be kind of a, a slap in the face for when, it, when God's saying, hey, it's time for you to worship me, and instead we stand there and just kind of maybe cross our arms or maybe he's the furthest thing from our mind. Maybe we're thinking about our own problems. Maybe we're thinking about what's going on in the sports game. Maybe, maybe we're thinking about food or whatever it is. That's my right there, sorry. <laughs> and instead we're standing there, and, and, and what do we do? What do we do? We literally mouth the words that are on the, on the board. Vain worship. I'm singing a song because that's what we do at church. I think God wants me to fall in love with him. I think when it's time to walk into the throne room, it's time to say, God, you are it. You are perfect. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to adore you. I'm going to recognize you. I'm going to sing to you. I'm going to tell you thank you. I'm going to say praise you. I'm going to lift you up because you are worthy of that. 
But I'm afraid this is what happens in our worship time. We get the vain worship. I want you to see this next verse. Go on to the next one. Matthew 15, 8, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You ever wonder why churches do music? See, we don't even think about that. It just, it just becomes part of our tradition, which is garbage, really. You ever wonder why everywhere you go, they start out with, if for church services, they start out in song? If we, if we don't get this right, if we don't understand it, then it becomes just a song. Then it becomes just this vain stuff that comes off of my lips. But if I walk into with the idea that the scriptural part of this is they would send the worship team out before the battle would begin, then we would understand it a little bit more. If we walked in, think about this, folks. If we walked into the throne room, if we could recognize the sanctuary as the throne room and then that we're getting the opportunity not being made to or told to or here's this big boring bunch of music again, if we, had, if we saw it as the opportunity to walk in and give God a love letter, wouldn't we do that? This should change our worship. This is an act of love. Love is a verb. That's what we called it this week. Love is a verb. I'm not saying that everyone has to sing. I'm saying it's in the scriptures a lot. You won't have to fight that one out yourself. But I'm saying that this time when we do the worship, it's an opportunity. If we saw it as an opportunity, man, it would change the whole atmosphere. Look at the next one, Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let's just stop there. <laughs> Read that. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Yeah. Come on now. Isn't that, that should blow your mind right there. Therefore, since you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and in awe. Wait a minute. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's it. That's it. If there is nothing else to be excited about, there it is. So we worship God acceptably with reverence and in awe. This isn't vain worship. This isn't just a song. This is my love letter written back to God. And if you, I, I, I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad because maybe you're not there yet. And I get it. We're all on different journeys. But when you recognize what's been done for you, there's something that comes out of you. Go on to the next one. This one's called I Give. Hey, hon. Happy anniversary. Oh, hey. Oh, our anniversary. Uh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't forget. I just, um, I thought it would be really awesome if you just went out and, uh, you know, picked out something that you wanted. So, um, here, let me get this for you. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. That, oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, we hadn't paid the electric yet, have we? Let me uh, hold on to that. Um, oh, wait, let me see. Let me get, let me hold on to that. Um, let's see. You can have that. Wait, wait. We didn't pay the car insurance, did we? Huh. Let me put that back there. Oh, there you go, hon. Uh, <laughs> I just gave you two dollars. Uh, Thanks. Um, man, you Thanks. got me a lot of stuff. Um, hey, you know what? Uh, I got that meeting after church. I'm going to need uh, this back for lunch. <laughs> um, but you know what? We've got a paycheck coming this week. I'll get you next time, hon. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank love, you. Love you, too. Yeah. 
That doesn't work, does it? That doesn't work, does it? When the love of your life offers so much, and I don't want to make it about things. That, please don't get me wrong on this. It's not about things, but that's a visual that you can get. But when the love of your life offers you so much, isn't giving part of a relationship? <laughs> we don't want to talk about this in church. <laughs> isn't giving part of a relationship? And, and my wife, in just the little skit, she walks in with all these, these blessings because she loves me, man. She's pouring her blessings out on me. And then, and then what do we do uh, here as a church with all these blessings that we've been overwhelmed with? And I'm, I'm serious. If, you, if you, you, you sit down this week, your homework this week is just sit and write down the blessings that have come into your life, whether it's kids or family or, or finances, the houses, whatever, whatever it is, just blessings. And you start thinking of those things and you start thinking of all the things that have been given to you, then this is the exact same scenario that we do to God. And then when it's time for the offering, and look, I'm, I'm not a person that's going to beg for money. I'm just saying that giving is part of a relationship, right? And when it's time to, to put our money into the offering, and then we, we walk out and we recognize all the blessings, the worship times just happen, we just recognize all the blessings that have come into our life, and then it starts, all of a sudden our priorities get a little off, don't they? Let me, oh, 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 man. Um, i got to cover this, and i got to cover this, and... I definitely don't want to just get the McChicken today. I want to get a number five meal. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. What is he worth? I want you to see these. Watch this. Luke 6.38. Man, uh, Dave nailed this earlier. Luke 6.38. Give and it will be given. <laughs> it's not give to get. That's not what it says. Don't get that into your mind. That's a, that's a Christian thing that we say all the time, and that's just not what it says. It's not give to get. It's give, and it will be given, because like what Dave was saying earlier, we get more so we can give more. You understand that? Now look what it says, a good measure pressed down. Look at these blessings. I, I want you to see the blessing that comes here. Given it will be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. Huh. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Ouch. Right? Now, whether it's time, money, whatever it is, how much are you asking God for this week? <laughs> now, this, now the verse seems a little harsh, don't it? God, I want, I want, I need, I need. Uh, excuse me. For with the measure you used, it will be measured back to you. We've got to figure out how to use our time better. We've got to use, figure out how to use our finances better. If there's things around a church that need to be done, we need to do it. If there's some people in your neighborhood that need to know the Lord, they need to know Him. There's some things that we need to do because give and it will be given. Understand that concept? Watch this, this is going to beat you up a little bit. Go on to the next one. This is probably a picture of some of us. Yeah? Now watch. Again, I'm not, I'm not a pastor that gets up and begs for money, but I want you to see these biblical truths. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. The verse starts out with each of you. So, that wipes out, well, I'm not supposed to. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Every single person that's a believer should give. It wouldn't say each of you, right? Is there, are we clear on this? This isn't a Pastor Andy's opinion. Each of you should give what you have decided. You know what decided means? 
That means before I got here. I should have an idea of what I'm putting in the offering plate this week. Well, we don't do an offering plate or in the mailbox. <laughs> Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for, but God loves the cheerful giver. Here's what I understand. He takes care of me. It's not mine anyway. We've been asked to give. I'm not, I don't want to brag. I, I'm not bragging. What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, he loves me. And when I give, he takes care of me. And when I give, don't, when you give away something, don't you get a blessing? Don't, I, seriously? I mean, any of you have gone down when we fed the homeless and you're standing there handing out food to people and they're, they're walking out with bags and stuff. There's just something awesome about giving to somebody that needs something. Go on to the next one. I share intimacy Hey. hey, man, Finally. finally, just me and you and everyone here. <laughs> she wasn't expecting that, sorry. No. So it's been a long week, Hannah. It has, it has. I've just been sitting here thinking, man, God has just blessed us so much and looking at all the blessings that he's given us and our kids and as they get ready to go back to school and just a lot going on. Yeah, it has. It's been really... Oh, I'm getting a, oh, sorry, getting a phone call. Yeah, let me get that. Hey, yeah, yeah, sure. No, 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 that's fine. We can get that on the schedule. Sure, yep, yep. No, I was, no, 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 you're not bothering me. I was, abs I was doing nothing at all. I was absolutely doing nothing, nothing at all right now. So, yep, I'll, we'll get that on right now. Let me just get my computer open. Sorry, hon. Um, yeah, yep, let's work on it, so, sure. Let me. That doesn't work, does it? No relationship will work unless there are those times in your relationship where it's just you and that person. Obviously, there's the busyness of the day, and there's stuff that Christine and I will talk about on the phone over and over, or, you know, what, what we're doing with the kids, or what we're doing for dinner, or what we're doing for, you know, whatever. We have these conversations, but there, there, there are these moments, and man, I remember, like, just times where, where uh, I'll get home from a basketball game, it'll be late or whatever, and, and I'm, I'm thinking it's time to go to sleep, and she doesn't. <laughs> And you know why? It's because there's stuff on her mind, there's stuff that she wants to talk about, and so we sit and talk and we share about what's going on and we share who's, who's in trouble and who needs, who needs things, and then we talk you know, just these different things where there's intimacy beyond just the, the, the ordinary of the day. If we're not careful, Christian, we'll just get caught up in the ordinary of the day with our relationship with God. And we'll just kind of do the, uh, I'm in the car driving, prayer to God. Or right before I go to sleep, prayer to God. Or, uh, you know, the, the somebody needs help, prayer to God. And, so, and then we get done today and we say, well, I, I think I talked to God three or four times today. And the reality is we probably just asked Him for stuff. Go on to the next slide for me. It's James 4, 8. I want you to see this. It says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. We miss this empowerment that, is, that we have. We miss this intimacy that we can have. Think, think about this. The creator of the universe wants one-on-one -on -one time And the scripture says, the closer that I try to get to him, the more he'll get closer to me.
Doesn't that sound awesome? The closer, there's no, li- listen, there's no limit. It's not like, God, I get 15 minutes and then you've got the rest of the world to take care of. Like, there's no limit to this. Like, the closer I want to get to him, <laughs> the closer he'll get to me. That's awesome. What an awesome thought. And go on to the next one. I show loyalty. It's, uh, I, you just come up. Oh, hon, hey, look, I've been having a really, really tough day, tough week. Um, I, wa- I want you to know this. You are the only thing I need. You are absolutely, I know we're getting ready to go, but you are, I just needed you to know you are the absolutely only thing I, um, you know what, I need, I need, uh, I need my cell phone. <laughs> I need you and my cell phone, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need, I'm going to need this, this addiction that I have. I need that. Uh, but other than that, you are the only, I need, I need my hobbies, um, let me get my hobbies because I definitely need that. I think, I think we're about ready to go. Wait a minute. I've got another addiction here. Let me just get to this here and then let me pack that up and let me see if I got everything. And, uh, uh, hon, uh, you're, seriously, you were the only thing. You were the only. Hon. That doesn't work either, does it? I show loyalty. You are my one and only. And then we tell God, you are the one and only. No one gets any other worship than you. And then all this stuff comes into our life, right? Whether it's an addiction, whether it's a hobby, whether it's uh, just time and effort on our hands, maybe it's just our work and all these things and and our loyalty. And then I I want you to see this. Um, Look what it says in the next next slide there. It says Matthew 6.24. No one can serve two masters. For either he hates the one and loves the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. And, and I just started thinking about like this struggle that we have in our lives. And if Christine's the only one, it wouldn't make sense for me to be out telling her she's the only one and then loving something else. These idols that would come in the way, and there's idols that come in the way. Go on to the next verse. Now I want to talk about the picture first because this has been, this has been man, I've been fighting with this. Like, like I was saying earlier, we have this great explanation. We have this great understanding that God loves us. And, and, and we've heard this. We've heard this a gazillion times. I may have lost the battle, but he's already... Right, right. So that's great, that's great. I think that is a cop-out. That is a cop-out. I understand Jesus Christ has conquered everything. I get it. But I think sometimes it's time to fight and win some battles. I'm thinking about these addictions that come up and these things that we deal with all the time, these other idols that somehow get in between us and God, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a hobby, whether it's alcohol abuse, whatever it is. And I think these things start to come back around. And what we do is we do this. We curl up into the fetal position and we just wait for the devil to kick our butts again. And then we say, it's okay. God's already won the war. How discouraging was th- does that sound? Why can't I win some battles? We've got to do something. There's action to this. If, he, if I've got to be loyal, I've got to put him first. I've got to at some point look at these things and say, no more. Stand up to these bullies that are coming to our life that are kicking our butts, and they are. You know it. In our church, there's some addiction going on that you're just letting it overcome you because you say God's already won the war. Stand up and fight against it. Thank you. Look what it says. You don't, 
you've got to connect to this power. Romans 8, 11, The same Spirit that lives in... Uh, this, the same Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. Right. Don't you dare think that you have to lose the battle. That's right. It ain't just a nice sentence. <laughs> Look at this. Go on to the next one. If you would recognize how tiny the devil is compared to your God... Therefore, submit to God this morning. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now look, I don't know how many of you have ever been in a fight. Most of us do not fight with the devil. We'll say, God, I quit. Trust me, I've been here. Never doing that again. Never doing that again. You've been there. Never doing that again. Not going to do that again. Not going to do that again. I'm surrendering. I'm submitting. I'm not never going to do that again. And the devil comes like this. He does. It's not even. He, he, there is no battle. He walks up and goes like this. Takes your hand and he walks you right back into the same stupid junk you was in just a few minutes ago. Where's the resistance? Where's the part of you that's as greater as he is in me than he is in the world? And it's time to fight back a little bit. Amen. That makes sense. Yeah. I love this. Go on to the next one. 2 Timothy 3 5. Church, we've got to be careful. We'll say we love him. We'll say we love him. We'll say we love him. And then these, these little, little battles come along and we fail and look what it says having a form of godliness oh god yep i love you i'm at church i'm loving you at church but but we deny the power i'm watching that war room i don't want to be a spoiler alert you need to go see it but there's one part in there where the wife walks around the house and she just starts telling the devil to get out no he's not in charge of that house anymore I think for us as Christians, it's time for us to do that. Matter of fact, my next slide is this. Look, get back up and fight. Some of you have been knocked down. Maybe you failed again this week. Maybe you feel that devil coming on, that temptation, that urge, whatever it is, and you're like, man, here it comes, here it comes. I don't know how to win this. I don't know how to win this. Well, why don't you uh, turn to that power? Recognize that same spirit that raised Jesus. Listen to what I'm saying. The same spirit that raised a man from the dead lives inside of you. Yeah. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he in you. You can do all things through Christ. You can do these things. No weapon formed against you should prosper. You're a winner. You can overcome. These are decisions that you need to make. Go on to the next one. I want you to see this. And I serve. Oh. Hey. Oh, those boxes you, came in. Can you get these? Yeah. Um, those, we need to get those to the back, right? Yes. How many was those? There's 12 of them out there. I, I so want to help you. I definitely... I really, I really, really am going to help. I, I think this is perfect. I know how I can help. Let me just, uh, let me get on Facebook. I'm going to ask some people if they'll show up. And uh, maybe we can put it out to the church, folks. They'll just jump off whatever they're doing. They'll get here. I, I know they'll get here. The church, Seriously? They'll be, yeah, they'll. No? Um, I got it. I definitely want to help. I really, I, I um. Maybe we should pay somebody to do it. Let me see if I can, see if I can, where'd my wallet go? Oh, my, oh, oh here it is. Maybe we can pay a couple people to come. You, that'll work? Let me just pull um, out. I know that solves everything. We'll just do this. And, no? Don't worry. Yeah. All right. That doesn't work, does it? Part of my relationship with my wife is helping whether it's vacuuming or cleaning up around the house or whatever she needs, that's part of it. Look, yeah. there's something about a relationship. Folks, I want you to get this. There's something about a relationship where you serve the other person. It, 
and, and their needs to come before your needs. Now this, this whole thing that hits in two different levels, doesn't it? But I want you to think about what we do when it's, when it's church stuff. Look, I'm, I'm telling you, in, our, in your bulletin, church, I'm going to stomp on your feet, so you might want to cover your toes here for a second. We're looking for nursery workers. We're looking for people to help in Sunday school classes. We're looking for people to help start ministries. We're looking for help all over in different areas. And what happens is almost similar to what we just did there. Let's, I mean, I know how I can help. I can put it out on Facebook and see if there's some people that'll help our church, or maybe I'll just throw an extra 20 in the offering plate, and maybe that'll help them take care of whatever. When the reality is, is that beyond my limitations there, helping her carry something? No, it's not. See, God's given us all gifts. God's given us all abilities so that we can jump in and do some things for God so we can serve God. We are able to do these things instead of maybe trying to ask other people to or maybe even putting extra money in the offer plate. Maybe it's, maybe it's just this. I love him so much. I want to do it for him. Does that make sense? Go on to the next one. Mark 9, 35, And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all, and a servant of all. What did you do this week to help God? What did you do this week to say, God, it's in my power, it's in my ability, I am capable of doing this? Whew. What if we loved our wives the way that we love God? Go on to the next one. Look what it says. This is a very important verse. He says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. What he's saying is the way that we love God is that we do love people. Strangers or God in costumes. Makes sense. And whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done for me. Man, we've got to figure out how to love on people. That's how we love God. That's how we serve. Whatever it is, whether it's helping the kids' room or or helping clean, or, or helping in the nursery, or helping in the sound equipment, or helping clean up afterwards, or picking a night to, to come in here and, and, and disciple somebody, starting another ministry, starting a Bible study at your house. There are all these things that are in your capability, but instead what happens is, and again, I know, I know this is kind of harsh, but what happens is we kind of go to this social media thing and say, maybe I can get somebody else to do it, or maybe if I tell the pastor about my idea that he'll get it started, or maybe we can, maybe we, if we just put a little bit more money into it and say what it's for, they can put that towards it. And when the reality is the capability lies inside of you, God wants you to serve him. God wants you to do something for him. God wants you to be a part of reaching the kingdom. Go on to the next one. I love this. You're going to love this. You'll love the picture too. Hey, hon, I got to run and get the kids' school supplies and I need to pick up oh, some groceries Oh, that's right. And stuff, it starts so. Tuesday. Kids, yeah. kids' school supplies. Um, what do you need? Uh, what, do you know, what do you want? You, what do you got? Um, I can give you the, I can give you the credit card. Wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not going to give you the credit card. That would give you, that would give you access. That would give you access to everything. I don't, I don't want you to have access to everything. Let me give you a fifty dollar limit. You just take that fifty dollars. Get done what you can you get done with kids. what. Yeah, with what I'm giving you. Just get done what you can with that. I don't want you to have access to everything. So I don't really trust you that much. So. All right.
That doesn't work, does it? That doesn't work, does it? Because what's mine is already hers. What's mine is already his. Why would I not give him access to everything? That's wrong. That's not an act of love. The act of love is giving God access to everything. My house, my money, my talents, my gifts. And not limit him. God, I don't know what you're going to do with this money, so I'm only going to give you this much this week. We don't really trust him. I trust my wife. I trust her. She's not going to make bad decisions. She's not, I'm going to come home and hopefully we still have a house. <laughs> right? Hopefully I threw that in there. You see what I'm saying? Like, I trust her. She's going to make the right decision. She's going to get what the kids need. She's not coming home with, like, balloons and cotton candy and stuff. Unless it's for me, which would be awesome. <laughs> it's not mine. In this relationship, right, that's what we say, right? That's what every Christian says. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. Well, if it's about relationship, then it's not mine. It's ours. She's got every right to it. Does that make sense? Go on to the next one. I know I'm running over a little bit, but we'll get there. When I am afraid... I put my trust, we'll not worry about that video. When I'm afraid, I'll put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can the flesh do to me? There's no reason to fear him. This awesome God has everything put together. And he's, look, he's my daddy. He wants what's best for me, right? I can trust him in that whatever is, going on, whatever is going on in my life, even how tough it is, even how miserable it is, I can trust that my daddy is letting me go through it because at some point, at some level, it's going to be what's best for me. And I trust him that way. Does that make sense? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you can go to the next one. We're just going to read that. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He's got this all figured out. You see the picture? What an awesome... And it's not about stuff. I get it. I, I don't want to think you all think it's about stuff. But look at the picture. Isn't that, isn't that really what it is? Just trust me. But God, I love this one so much. I'm going to hold on to what I have, and I'm not going to give you what I've got because I don't really know if you've got something better for me when the reality is everything that God does is better for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, you all have read that. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and to hope God's purpose is for me. He, he loves me. A father loves his child. He wants me to, he, he doesn't want bad things for me. That wouldn't make any sense. Here's the last one. Watch this. I declare my love. Oh man, awesome! Um, just chilling. Because uh, there's this party. There's going to be girls. It's going to be awesome. You there's going to be some girls there. Yeah, awesome. The girls. Uh, well, um, I, uh, I, I don't think I can go. Why not? Um, Who is this? Was this your girlfriend? Your wife? Um, not really. It's just somebody I kind of go to when I'm in trouble. That's really, that's really that all she's there for, um, just when I'm in trouble. So, um, well, then you're good. So, so you might come tonight. Yeah, I'll probably be all there. Right. All right, call me. I'll pick you up. <laughs> that wouldn't work, would it? Why wouldn't I tell somebody about the love of my life? 
either there's really not a relationship or I never really was in love with her. Look what Psalms 96.3 says. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the people. My, one of my favorite verses is in Acts when Peter, that man, this guy, he gets fired up and he says, you can do whatever you want to me, guys, but I can't help. I know what he's done for me. I know what I've been through. I know who I was. I know how he saved me. I know how he forgave me. And I know, I know what I've seen happen in my life. And in Peter's words back to those that were in charge, the people that were ready to throw me, you can do whatever you want, but I can't help. I can't help but talk about the things that I've seen and the things that I've heard. I can't shut up about him because I'm in love with him. I, I'm in love with him. Somehow I messed up the last slide, but if you'll pull it up for me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now this is the part I like. Look what it says. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What that means is, and I believe this too, I believe that mine and Christine's relationship, the way that I love her, the way that she loves me, is an example to my children, so that one day when they get older and they get married, they find the right person. It's, it's a similar to this. I can't be ashamed of how I love. I want to love my wife in front of my, my kids. I want my kids to see that I, I love her. I want, them to, I want them to see that I give to her. I want them to see that I serve her. I want them to see that I appreciate her. I want them to see that I adore her. I want them to see those things. You know why? Because I want my kids to someday be able to do the same thing. And that's what's going on here. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because if I'm not ashamed and people understand that He is my Savior, He's my Master, He's my King, He's my everything, then maybe somebody will see that and go, that's what I want, and they'll get salvation. I want to finish with this, and I'm done. I'm sorry I've gone over... I want to talk about forgiveness, and you guys can come on up. We'll just do one. That's all right. Exalt thee. I think we miss it. We miss this big time. There's something in a relationship that's unconditional. And you, Christine and I, there's, we're, we're like everybody else. We've had arguments. We've gotten in um, disputes. It's usually about where we're going to eat. <laughs> I normally win. But we've gotten into arguments, and here's the cool part. I don't know if we get this. I don't know if you get this. I don't know if people get this, this whole forgiveness thing. Have you ever been forgiven of something? And I'm not talking about it on the spiritual realm right now. I'm just talking about just in somebody in your life, a husband or a wife or a girlfriend, relationship, some, where, where you've been forgiven and, and all of a sudden everything's, everything's not, just, not just good, it's, it's awesome. You know what I'm talking about? When you recognize that the relationship has been restored, like whatever has just happened, whatever the beef was, that it's out the window and that the relationship has been restored and I've been forgiven and, and relationship is back to where it's daddy and, and uh, child are hugging. You, you know what I'm talking about? Let God forgive you that way. He's not holding it over you. He's separated as far as the east is from the west. It's gone. In his eyes, if you ask for forgiveness, man, the, re the union is restored. I, I, I share this often. I think about a little child that's learning to walk. And he trips and falls and he makes a mistake while he's walking. And it, wouldn't it be ignorant of a dad to go, man, that was stupid, son. You tripped and fell. That's not what a daddy does at all, is it? When, you know what a daddy does when, it, when a child trips and falls and kind of stumbles? He says, come on, let's try it again. 
Let's get up. You're on a path. Let's do this again. We're gonna, you're going to get it right. You just got to keep trying. And the more you keep trying, the more you're going to get it right. I love you. I, am, I have no condemnation for any kind of mess ups. I don't look at that. It's been paid for. It's been covered. It might have been a mistake, but I just want you to get up and come again and try again because I love you. You ever been forgiven like that? That's what he wants to do this morning. Man, there's something about this love for sure that he gives to us. What about loving him back? What if we could somehow figure out how to put a relationship like we use with our wives and our families and our kids and our, our girlfriends and boyfriends? What if we could figure out how to do that with God? What if there was some way to pour myself out to him and say, God, you're it, you're the one. I love you. I'm not just going to say it, God. I'm going to make love a verb. I'm going to make it an action. I'm changing things this morning. I'm going to find out how to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Would you stand with me? We got one song. You guys can start whenever. I'm just going to keep talking with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Pastor, I need to fall in love with Jesus. That's my prayer this morning. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I, I don't even know if I'm doing it at all. And I need to change some things this morning. If that's you, would you just look up at me? Amen. Amen. All over. Amen. Then do it. Say, God, I'm going to learn how to love you. I'm going to learn how to love you this morning. I'm going to do it. There's some things that I'm going to change. You say, Pastor, I don't know if I've ever even accepted Christ. I don't even know this God. If that's your prayer this morning, I want to know this God. If that's you this morning, would you just look up at me so I can see your face? Just look up at me. Don't let me miss you. Amen. Amen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing this song called I Exalt Thee, and you're going to rip the building, the roof off the building the way that we're going to sing this song. And if you need somebody to pray with you or you just say, you know what, I'm coming forward and I'm just going to say, God, I'm going to start learning how to love you this morning, then you do that right now. Don't even wait. If you want to get to the altar now, say, I need, I need somebody to pray with me. There's some folks that need some prayer. I've already, I know. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. If you need somebody to pray with you, you come grab me. We'll get somebody to pray with you right away. Do you need somebody to pray with you? I need somebody right here to pray. The rest of us, here's what's going to happen. If you need to come forward, you come forward with the rest of us. We're going to exalt Him. We're going to, with our voices this morning, we're going to love one our God. Here we go. Can you guys get the words up on the exalt thee? Y'all better sing. Turn me off.
Heavenly Father, God, we praise You because You are awesome. We thank You. We love You, God. We're trying to figure this whole thing out, God. I pray that we would develop this relationship. God, I pray that we would exalt You. I pray that we would lift You up. I pray that we would serve You. I pray that we would tell folks about You, God. I pray that we would honor You. I pray that we would be loyal to You. God, I pray that we would learn to give. I pray for all these things, God, because I want a relationship with You. I don't want religion. I want to know You, God, and You say, if I draw near to You, You'll draw near to me. So God, this is the prayer of this church. We love You. We thank You. We praise You. We're going to honor You. In Your name we pray. So be it.